Right now on WCNC Charlotte at noon, telling testimony. Dr. Fauci and other health officials testifying even as we speak today before the Senate about reopening the economy. A few big takeaways from the testimony so far as we've been listening in. Dr. Fauci says the death toll likely being underreported at this point. It's much higher than is out there. The numbers out there. Adequate testing likely will not happen until probably September or October. And at that point is when we're going to be, be able to do millions of testing uh, uh, every single month here. And that's what experts say we really need to get a hold of this thing. And the CDC chief saying that in the middle of all this, at some point after this is done, we're going to have to rebuild our public health infrastructure system um, so it, it better responds to a situation like that. All that along with getting a vaccine available. Take a listen. We need to rebuild our nation's public health infrastructure. Data and data analytics, public health laboratory resilience, and our nation's public health workforce. Now's the time to put it in place for the generations to come, not only for the public health system that our nation needs, but for the public health system that our nation deserves. The head of the CDC right there. Thanks for staying with us here for the news at noon. I'm Ben Thompson here in the Carolinas. Uh, we're really seeing two different situations unfolding when it comes to the reopening South Carolina moving full speed ahead, opening businesses like salons, gyms, tattoo parlors, all within a few days from now. Here in North Carolina, things uh, decidedly taking a slower pace. But the lieutenant governor and members of the Council of State want the governor to speed up the reopening process. It comes as the latest numbers that just in show 15,346 cases here in North Carolina, 577 deaths. At the same time in South Carolina, there are more than 7,700 cases. Those orange, orange bars you see towards the right of your screen show the number specifically within the past two weeks. That's the allotment right there. The dotted line represents what's called the moving average. The trend line in Palmetto State you can see is pretty much flat, sort of a plateau over the last two weeks. Now, according to the White House's own guidelines for reopening, which most states are not following, we should say, that line should be flat or better yet, it should be going down for two weeks. WCNC Charlotte's Richard Devane once again with a closer look at South Carolina's latest reopening plans. Good afternoon, Ben. Already Governor McMaster has released the restrictions on a number of stores here in Rock Hill. Starting next week, he'll loosen the restrictions even more. As we went into it gradually with our reductions in and, li uh, and limitations on businesses. We're also coming out uh, very methodically and carefully. With that, Governor Henry McMaster announced the next wave of businesses which are allowed to reopen next Monday, including gyms, salons, tattoo parlors, massage therapy places, and pools. But instead of restrictions, McMaster is now recommending that gyms and pools reduce capacity to 20%, enforce social distancing, and disinfect surfaces. At close contact businesses, like hair salons, you might see spaced out separated stylist booths, mask worn, and waiting rooms outside. The move makes for a third Monday in a row of loosened restrictions. The state leaving how to handle those recommendations up to business owners, which for some, like restaurateur Will Bingham of the Improper Pig, he says his business needs more time, preferring to stick or to take out for now. To train our employees and ease back into it instead of just opening the doors and thinking it's going to be normal again. Again, this all starts next Monday, but it's important to remember these are just recommendations. It's still important for folks to practice their own personal social distancing guidelines. Follow those rules to keep you safe. We're in Rock Hill. Richard Devane for WCNC Charlotte. Richard, thanks. Many states across the country are seeing relaxed restrictions at this point, but many still being encouraged to wear masks. So we want to know what do you think? Should folks be required, required to wear masks? Not just recommended, but actually required. You can see the results right now in our online poll with uh, about 45% of you saying yes, 55% of you saying no. Just head on over to our app of the and, or you can always go to WCNC.com slash vote. Let us know what you think. In the meantime, NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has a look at some of the state's plans across the country. This morning, a grim milestone for New York City. The Department of Health saying the latest death toll from COVID-19 now tops 20,000. 
That report coming as New York's governor says the state is on the other side of the mountain. This is the next big step in this historic journey. Starting Friday, some parts of the state will be allowed to partially reopen if they've met specific criteria, like a sustained drop in new COVID cases, available hospital beds, and testing capacity. New York City has still not met those reopening goals, but that's not stopping Glenn Schlossberg. Instead of getting desperate, he's getting creative, opening this takeout french fry shop this week. I'm in the uh, fashion business, and uh, retail stores are shut down right now. We're all doing nothing. I said, now is the time. In neighboring New Jersey, reports of 72 deaths at a state-run care facility for veterans. Those grim numbers are emerging as businesses around the country assess how and when to open their doors. In Long Beach, California, bike paths and public parks are back. This is what we've been waiting for. In Florida, the Disney Springs Entertainment Complex is preparing to reopen next week, but not without some big changes. Along with social distancing, one of the things that we're likely going to require is masks for both the cast and the guest. Mississippi barbershops are now allowed to open with six feet between chairs and booths as South Carolinians get ready to enjoy their first taste of indoor dining in months. Going inside and having like the atmosphere of the restaurant is going to be really exciting. In Anchorage, Alaska, bar owners are welcoming back customers cautiously. We can't mess it up. If we mess it up, we're going to go right back to closing everything down and, and staying at home. Gabe Gutierrez reporting for us there. Time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. Businesses, as you saw in Gabe's piece, desperate to reopen. And the first hurdle they have to face, making sure their spaces are clean and that they stay clean. And that's a tall order. But UV light might be at least part of the answer. A decades-old technology could help businesses kill the coronavirus inside buildings. Let's connect the dots. The name is a mouthful. Upper Room Ultraviolet Germicidal Irradiation. But the idea is pretty simple, using the power of sunlight to kill germs. Sunlight naturally disinfects, and the UV spectrum of sunlight is really good at knocking out airborne pathogens. Right now, portable ultraviolet units are already in use to disinfect places like hospital rooms and subway cars. But those are only used when those spaces are unoccupied. Scientists want to mount these on ceilings, using fans to draw the air upward so anything floating around can get zapped. There are some roadblocks. First is cost. Installing these devices in a warehouse-sized store like a Walmart costs about $100,000. Also, there are some unanswered questions, like would enough air be drawn through those units to be disinfected? Scientists now scrambling to get those answers. And that is Connecting the Dots. All right, let's get to some breaking news out of Raleigh. And there are pictures that may seem familiar to you. Overhead view right now from a new helicopter of the protests right outside the state capitol, uh, the building there. Hundreds of people protesting on the streets of Raleigh, calling for the governor to reopen the economy. This, by the way, the fifth week in a row we've seen these NC reopen protests or reopen NC as they call themselves. We know the governor is expected to give us a, an update on the coronavirus this afternoon at 2 p.m. It comes as the lieutenant governor released a statement this morning, along with the majority of the members of the Council of State, which isn't aren't the aren't cabinet members, but that's an easy way to sort of think about it, calling on the governor to uh, speed up his reopening phase. They cited other states around us and, and actually said you could this is a Republican lieutenant governor asking the Democratic governor to go against uh, the president's guidelines and speed up the process. Also worth noting that the lieutenant governor is running for the governor's seat as well. Politics important in a situation this, like this to point out. We're going to keep our eye on the situation there in Raleigh to make sure everything stays, uh, stays calm um, and we'll bring you any updates as soon as they happen. And the governor's press conference and the news out of that, of course, live on WCNC Charlotte and in our app as well, 2 p.m. this afternoon.